welcome everyone to the next episode of Keto Chat. I am Carol Freeman, your host today, and I'm the creator of the Fast Track to Keto Success program. I am privileged to be here today with Dave Korzunski, the creator of Heads Up Health. And um, so let me just read, you know, his official bio is he's a Silicon Valley based technologist, health tracking enthusiast. And he's also the founder of Heads Up Health, a digital health company creating tools designed to empower individuals to take data-driven and self-directed approach to managing their health. And welcome, welcome, Dave. Thank you, Carol. Very happy to be here. Where are you, where are you joining us from? San Francisco, California. We right. have a sunny day here. As you, oh. as you may know, it gets gray and, and cold and cloudy here. So we're just coming off of a week of that. Okay. And the sun has reemerged and my windows are open and it's beautiful and bright here today. So um, a nice day in the city. Nice, nice. Yeah. So are, are you a native to San Francisco or how long have you lived there? I've been in the Bay Area for 10 years and I originally grew up on the frozen tundras of Winnipeg, Canada. So okay. <laughs> 25 humbling years up in Winnipeg. Oh all my, my gosh. Yeah, all my family is still there. So it's still home. But have you thought out yet? I don't think I can ever go back um, except to visit in the summertime. Okay. I've just become more of a warm blooded person just through a series of job opportunities. I ended up in the Bay area and okay. now it's home for me. Well, it makes sense that your, your tech background that you're there in the Bay area, right? So. Yep. Yep. So. It was uh, a career opportunity that got me out here and then I got bit by the entrepreneurial bug and tried, started my own venture. Well, tell us more about that. Like, how did you get interested in the tech world? And then how, you know, lead us through that whole path to getting bit by the bug? Yeah, well, I'd always been in technology, even growing up in Canada. My uncle had a technology company in Canada, and he got me my start in the business. And then different job opportunities led me off to the Caribbean for a few years, and then to Boston. And then the last job offer got me an opportunity to move to California. And it was during that seven year period here where I actually went through some of my own health challenges for the first time. And okay. as a young guy, you suddenly realize you're, you're not invincible and you can't just pound your body as much as you want in the gym and, and out on the weekends. And at some point you, know, you start to have some repercussions. And so mine were stress related symptoms just from the job. And like many people, I think as a result of a, of a personal experience, they ultimately end up going into a business to help uh, address a need of other people who may be in that same scenario. And it was actually not until I started working with a functional medicine doctor, the doctor you met actually a couple weeks ago in, Seattle, uh, in Austin. Oh, okay. Do Dr. Marcajani? Yeah, Dr. Justin. I got connected with him and he was able to run some more tests on me that my conventional doctor didn't run and, and helped me fix some digestive issues that were undiagnosed and some thyroid issues that were undiagnosed. But he didn't have access to my medical records. They were in California and he was okay. in Texas. So I started putting all this stuff in a spreadsheet and sharing it with my doctor. Ultimately, what I realized, it was all just numbers. You know, thyroid panel numbers, macronutrient numbers, it was all just data. And so the spreadsheet actually, first of all, dragged me into these numbers, things I had no idea about, HDL, LDL. I was a, I was a computer nerd, so I understood certain technical things, but not that. Ultimately, it was really powerful. And I said, how do we, how do we build this for other people who need it? And long story short, that, that led me down the path to uh, my current project. Okay. And so you found, uh, let's see, so you found healing through the support of your functional medicine doc and um, then the whole investigating into your numbers. And, you know, from looking at your, your, you know, your website and your approach now, it looks like you've really taken instead of just numbers, which for most people are like, that just makes my head spin. Yep. You've done a, a fantastic job of making the visual so people can actually, you know, most people need some kind of visual representation of that with graphs and charts and things to really make sense of it. Right. Yeah. I think just having a nice, easy, simple dashboard to look at and you can say, you know what, these are the five things I care about. And, and every, every, every person has those five things could be completely different. So if we have someone who's using a ketogenic diet for cancer, 
good chance that they have the glucose ketone index front and center in their dashboard. Okay. And somebody coming at it from a weight loss use case could be a completely different set of measurements. So just easy ways to say, okay, these are the things that matter for me. These are, this is the way I want to see my information displayed so that I can use it. And so it's just customizable and simple and accessible. And hopefully it's providing information that people can use to guide their progress. Nice. So, um, you know, who's your ideal user? Is it somebody who's just a numbers geek or, um, you know, who, who is going to yeah. be benefit from your software? Well, I, you know, when my um, business partner and I first started working on this, we thought this would be for the quantified self community or for the, you know, the quote unquote, the biohackers okay. or, or generally people who are naturally inclined towards data. That, okay. that was our first hypothesis. And once we launched it out there, it turns out it's the exact opposite. Oh, okay. And our most engaged users are, are probably the least technically savvy and data-oriented people you can imagine. Okay. But it's really not. And, and that's been the most surprising part. And so it's just been interesting to see that very non-technical people can take some data and understand, okay, I need this number to go in this direction and that number to go in that direction. So it's actually been that type of demographic that's, that's gotten most engaged with this thing, which is somewhat of a surprise. And it's also been a largely people following low carb interventions because it does require a certain amount of tracking. And it does require an individual who wants to be self-directed to their health because they're, they're doing these interventions themselves, typically not something the doctor is giving you the manual for. Mm. You're kind of like, okay, I got to figure this out. So, so those are the kinds of people that seem to be getting the most value from what we do. Yeah, that's, well, it's really fantastic. And I love that you shared how, um, cause that was my impression as well. It's like, oh, this is going to be the people that have their own spreadsheets and just makes this a prettier version of it. But it's, it, you're right. Like, actually reaching that population is so much more powerful because I can't tell you how many ladies I talk to that I work with. They're like, well, I got my labs for my doctor and my doctor just said like, well, watch that one. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they can kind of, sometimes they can tell me the numbers, but they have no idea what they mean or, you know, what watch it means and things like yeah. that. And so it sounds like you've really integrated in your software, some guidance and direction of, you know, so how does that work? Does it suggest like this one should be a little higher, this one should be a little lower? Are people setting their own goals or? Um... Well, with the medical records specifically, some, some people are inclined to look at that information. Other people, it, they just, it could be too much information for them or okay. a lot of these tests are very obscure. But um, first of all, you do have the ability to import this data. And, and typically when you're doing a lifestyle intervention like keto, perhaps with your clients, so depending on, on what their goals are, they may be trying to make some of those, those clinical numbers move. And those could be like metabolic markers, fasting insulin, uh, fasting blood sugar, um, lipid panel numbers. So the first thing is just being able to help people get that information out of the doctor's system and into their own system. Okay. So you can start to understand how your lifestyle changes affect those numbers. That's, that's the first part of it. And then depending how deep each person wants to go, we've been working on a series on our blog. Um, Amy Berger's been helping us with that, which is once I go low carb or keto, whatever the case may be, I need to interpret these test results a little bit differently than somebody who is not following a low carb diet. So when you go to the doctor and get a cholesterol test, they say, these are the ranges that indicate you have a disease. And you, you may be close to that range, but still be considered normal, for example. So you're not in the disease range, but that still may be something that you want to take action on. So it's really just about getting this information available to people. They, you can set up your own reference ranges if you want. So if you're following low carb and you want to set your goal for hemoglobin A1C uh, to 4.5, uh, you can do that. And that's much lower than the reference range from the lab. Okay. So for, for, for the medical records part of it, that's how we do it. It's just bringing this information in to use it. I'd say that a, a lot of our very active people don't even use the medical records part at all. They okay. just want to be able to track macros and weight and a couple other things, and they don't get involved with the medical components at all. 
again, it really just goes back to the individual and, and how nerdy they want to get on all of this stuff. Well, and it's, it sounds like it's set up as well to help their whole care team integrate their approach, right? So if somebody's gone to their doctor, for example, and got their lipid panel on their blood glucose and A1C and, yep. and that can get uploaded and then somebody like me could take a look at what those numbers are and then help that person fine tune their approach to be able to optimize their health. And so they can, they don't have to worry about those numbers. They can let other people um, take a look at them that understand that more. Is that, is that part of how it's being used? That's the intention. So just going back to my own example, I, I had my, my lab test results here in California at um, UCSF, which is University of California at San Francisco. And I had some other data at Stanford because I work nearby and my functional doc was in Austin, Texas. So I was just able to connect in those facilities and then give the functional doc access. Okay. Or if I was working with you as a coach and I wanted you to review those numbers and maybe give me a perspective that's not from the conventional medicine mindset, then I could give you access to that information as well, or it could be a family member. So there's, there's different ways, but the main thing is just to get the information in a place where it can be used by whoever, you know, there's, there's this quote that like, you know, fam health comes from more than just your doctor. It's typically your family. And it could be someone like yourself. It could be a functional specialist. So you need a way to provide centralized access to information. So I think that's really important. That's, that's not how the conventional system works today, as you know. Right. Right. Everybody's just reliant on their, well, my doctor's going to call me yep. and tell me what, you know, what, what to watch out for. They don't re spend the time reviewing any of the numbers and, um, most of them aren't taking a functional approach either and talking about that optimal range too. But yep. I, I, I love that this gives the opportunity then to give help people make much more sense about um, their approach, especially, you know, low carb ketogenic approaches. You know, a lot of my clients are, they feel like nothing makes any sense. And like, uh, you know, why is my blood sugar a little bit higher than it was yep. last week? Why are my ketones higher low? And, you know, I've had them, um, keeping track of, well, how many grams of protein did you have at dinner? And, uh, you know, how many calories you're having day to day and things like that. And I've had to just have them track that on a spreadsheet and then I have to make sense of it for them. And so I love this opportunity to um, help them see some of those trends in things that are going on and make a little more sense of it rather than them just feeling, um, you know, like they don't have any control and they don't understand what's happening. So I'm really, I'm really excited to dive into this more and see how it can help um, help people make more sense of, of their approach and, and get more control of it. Cause that's your whole goal, right? Is helping people, empowering people to have that control over their, their own health and numbers. Yeah. Data-driven decisions. And as I'm sure, you know, there, there's always the risk that people get too caught up in the data. Oh, and so <laughs> yes. we, we also need to properly counsel people on, on how to interpret information and okay to not get too caught up in certain numbers about why is this number too high or too low. Sometimes you, you, you also have to come at it from a pragmatic point of view. And that's where coaches like yourself, people like me can come in and you, you could eat the same food on three different days and see three completely different responses. And so it's also helping people interpret the information correctly and use it strategically. But generally what, what I think is most exciting is giving people data to help them make better decisions. Whatever data it means to you, I think that is a really powerful thing. That's the whole reason I started this is can data help people make better decisions about their health? You can, there's a million tools that will help you make better decisions about your money, where to invest, right. and yeah. where, to, where, to, where to buy stocks. And there's a million tools out there to help you optimize your advertising on your website. Uh, Google Analytics, for example, and all of these other kinds of tools. So I think there needs to be something similar for health. Yeah. Oh, that's really exciting. I didn't even thought about it that way. That's really cool. You're right. Uh, all those tools and business and finance, but probably arguably the most important thing, your own health is is lacking in that. So you're you're here to step in and fill that gap for us. And Yeah. Know. I don't know why that is. There, It just seems that you can instantly ask someone how much money is in their bank account. And within a second, they can log into online and, and look at all of the transactions. But if you ask somebody 
what was your last cholesterol number or your hemoglobin A1C? Arguably, far more important information in, in, in the grand scheme of health and longevity. Yeah. And that information is not accessible, at least for most people. Right, right. Yeah. Um, um, oh my gosh, where am I going to take this next? So what did you find then, you know, starting to biohack your own numbers? Like what did you, you know, you said you had some digestive issues and, yep. um, and thyroid. And so what did you change and, and um, you know, what, where did that lead you on your own path of health and diet and lifestyle? Yeah, well, from my own experience, I was coming off of what is just standard American diet. This was, I don't know, let me think now, probably 2011, 2012 timeframe. Okay. And it was my functional doc that ran the, ran the GI test, which I'd, I'd never had done before. And there was some gram-negative bacteria overgrowth in the GI tract, which is bad news. As, as you know, a lot of the GI infections ultimately have links to autoimmune disease and all kinds of other things. So that was the first thing was just clean up digestion. And that's the first time I went on any kind of ancestral or paleo kind of eating plan whatsoever. And, and that was the first part of it. Well, before, before that, what was your opinion of kind of the whole you know, were you one of those guys who were like, oh, that's that crazy group doing that thing? Or did you have any interest in nutrition at all? Or, or you know, where were you? I was were just you? ignorant. You know, I was okay. just like a 30-something-year-old guy that had never had to think about that before. So it wasn't due to any perceived stereotypes. It was largely just because it was never anything I'd ever had to think about before. Okay. I would just go to the doctor, get some blood work of which I had no idea what it was. He would tell me I'm fine. And yeah. then I'd go on my way. So it was really just a lack of awareness more than okay. anything. So, so what kind of improvements did you notice as you started to change your, change your diet? Yeah, I think for many people, just getting off of the processed and refined carbs and sugars, immediately I saw some really fantastic weight loss. But ultimately that hit a plateau. Okay. And I also got, for the first time, a full thyroid panel one which is where a functional doc will look at all of the thyroid markers besides just TSH, which is what most of the conventional doctors will run as part of a routine physical. But again, I, I knew nothing about these numbers, but now I do, so I can, I'll, I'll share a little bit. Um, the T4 number, which is, is the primary um, part of the, th the, the first part of the cascade was great. My T3 was terrible. And my reverse T3 was too high. So my, that's like a T4 to T3 conversion problem. And that's very common with stress and metabolic disease. These are all things I went on to learn much, much later. So the second thing was just getting those numbers fixed, getting stress levels, getting sleep, getting a clean diet. That fixed up all of those things. And so that was like the second major step. And for the past 12 months, I've been following low carb and, and keto as well. And that's taken my body composition to a completely different level. It's just been amazing. It, it's taken a while. It's been the better part of, I'd say, 15 months now. But it's been incredible. So that's where I'm at today. What made you make the, the transition to reducing carbs more? Is it just purely... Uh, body composition? Were there some other things you were trying to fine tune or? No, it was body composition. When I first built Heads Up Health, I'd never even heard of keto. I'm like, okay. I, I, I know I want this system. I hope other people want this. But there was, I, there was this one guy who was logging in like two, three, four, five times a day. And I was excited, right? It's like my first, my first engaged user. So <laughs> I, I mailed him up. I'm like, oh, hey, dude, what are you doing in the system? And he's like, oh, I'm, on, I'm on this keto diet. I've got my fitness pal connected. You know, I'm tracking my macros. I'm tracking my blood sugar. He's like, I'm tracking my ketones. I'm like, oh, wow, that's pretty awesome. So like, maybe I should try this keto thing. And so I, total newbie, right? I just went online, did a few Google search. I'm sure you get this story a lot. Yeah. Found, found my first macro calculator. <laughs> took a, 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 I don't know, a, a first guess at what I thought these, mm -hmm. these macros should be. And, and I went and uh, bought a blood ketone meter just to actually see if I was getting in ketosis. I'm like, man, this is pretty friggin' hard. You know, I was cutting everything down and, and the numbers were like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And then it, then it finally hit me and I, I, I started to get the hang of it and learn. 
And it's just been a really fascinating journey ever since. But it was mostly to learn what keto was. And then through that, I got a lot of really amazing body composition changes. I actually haven't lost that much weight overall. Mm. I think maybe right now, probably 10 pounds total. But it's all just completely shifted, which is more like body recomposition than than weight loss. And so I don't know how that matches with, with your clients and your experience, but that's what happened to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I see that all the time is that, you know, women, you know, even a, if they follow it for a year that they're seeing like, well, gosh, you know, I didn't see that big of a change on the scale, but we yeah. dive in deeper and we look at, you know, they increase their bone density and their muscle mass and lost yeah. more fat. And they're yeah. just, those two things, and I don't know if you're familiar with that from before, but it was like, you know, we're told you can do one or the other. You can lose fat or gain muscle. You can't do both at the same time. And so this mm -hmm. you know, part of a ketogenic diet just puts that all on its head and makes people's heads spin a little bit that, that that can even happen. But Yeah, it's amazing. And, that you know, a lot of our users were, were, were emailing us asking us to build the uh, feature to track measurements. Okay. And that seems to be a better way to go, especially yeah. when you're doing these types of therapies, because it's not that the number on the scale is misleading. And actually, if, if I wish I would have taken my measurements before I started this whole journey, I'm taking them now 18 months later. Ah. I think that's, that's a, probably one of the best indicators of overall progress, how your clothes fit, um, what your measurements look like and, and, for general weight loss, that is, for, for mm -hmm. chronic conditions and stuff, I think it is important to also look at the lab test results. But for body composition, yeah, just the, the measurements, I think, and, and the changes I've noticed are the, are the most interesting. And so what kind of, um, you know, stories of success are you hearing from your users? Like, what are they saying about what this, your tool is allowing them to be able to do? Yeah. Um, there is a certain type of person that really wants the data and mm -hmm. finds great value and, 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 and it provides a level of uh, comfort that things are moving in the right direction. So a, a couple examples, one of them is um, one of our users with, uh, with cancer. He's an older gentleman and he's using a ketogenic diet and, and using some advanced features like the glucose ketone index, which is put out by, by Dr. Seafried and his team as a way to keep your metabolism in a, an optimal zone for cancer therapy. So that one's really powerful. Just tracking everything. When, when you start talking about keeping cancer in remission, you know, that gets pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a big one. Um, other people where much like yourself, you'll just see complete remission of a lot of chronic metabolic disease. So we see a lot of that type of thing as well. A lot of people who just actually find that having the data keeps them motivated. Mm, so yeah. just being able to look at it and see progress. And that's not for everybody. There's a lot of people out there, as I'm sure you know, who don't need to track and mm. they just get it figured out and they're good. And so it just depends on the personality. But a lot of disease remission, a lot of disease management, those are the most ones that really hit home about the work you and I are doing, uh, respectively, to help people. Uh, so those are the main ones. Nice, nice. Yeah. And, and I'm wondering too, so when you, uh, uh, you know, before you embarked on your keto diet or when you were first starting it, did you have the experience, like a lot of people I talked to and they're like, you know, people who say this keto is so great for focus and mental clarity and energy and stable energy all day long. Like people think we're drinking some kind of Kool-Aid and, and like you sound like a snake oil, snake oil salesman. This is too good to be true. Um, yeah. Did you kind of have that perspective of like, yeah, maybe I can lose some more fat, but I don't know if it's all that that people are talking about. Um, well, I definitely noticed my energy levels changed. I think back to when I was just eating on a, on a standard American diet and I remember always needing a nap at mm -hmm. like three o'clock yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, just really clean and incredible energy levels. That's, that's true for me, whether I'm in ketosis as I'm, is measured or whether I'm just following a, um, a low carb eating plan. Okay. So that helps for sure. When I've, 
when I was really pushing myself into higher levels of, of ketosis and testing it, of course, I had really, really periods of incredible energy. I think one of the most interesting parts was just the feeling of control that I had over my appetite for the first time was really powerful. And as you, you go into these deeper states, it's like you can take it or leave it. You just have complete mastery over what you choose to eat. I mean, you, your brain seems to be working so well that somebody could put the most tempting food in front of you and you don't even think about it. Yeah. Um, and that, that was really hard. And that doesn't happen off all the time. It seems to, to ebb and flow. But it's, it's worked really well for me. And honestly, I still think it's really important to enjoy the finer things in life. So being able to go out with my family and, and have a glass of wine and indulge in a, in, a, in a delicious meal, as you get deeper and more adapted to this lifestyle, it seems to get easier to, mm -hmm. to, to get back on the wagon. I remember when I was first doing this and I'd eat a meal that had a lot of um, carbs in it. It could take me sometimes one to two weeks before I just got my brain and my motivation back to where it was. And over time, over months and months, and now over a year, it seems like I can almost effortlessly switch back and forth. Um, so I don't know what your experience is on that, but it, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of adaptation before that seems to come naturally, that effortless switching. So Yeah, and I, I think that that, here comes the bonus. Oh, you have a little visitor that came to say hello. <laughs> Who's, who's uh, the visitor? This, this is, this is. I just see is, a tail. This is blue. Oh, there, there's the face. <laughs> Hi, blue. Uh, yeah, he's going to think, he thinks he's my office mate and yeah, he's at helping at all. Um, uh, oh my gosh. Wait, I just lost <laughs> the cat interrupted. Um, um, Switching back and forth. Effortless. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So actually I think that is. Uh, one of the best signs of metabolic health is the fact yes. that you can switch from higher carbs and then go right back into that fat burning mode. And I really strongly believe that that's the way our bodies are ideally metabolically healthy designed is that, you know, the times that there were more carbohydrate sources available yes. in our environment yep. that we could eat those. And then when they went away, we could switch back over to fat burning and, you know, we live in this modern society where there's just excessive carbs and refined sugars and refined flour and all that kind of stuff that has basically just, you know, damaged us metabolically so that we lost that ability and we're stuck in this carb burning mode. And so I, I, I think that's exactly right is that um, that's a sign that you're, you're me metabolically healthy, that you can have those times of, you know, enjoying the finer things of life or indulgence. And then it's really easy to switch back over and you don't get that um, you know, hangover feeling of that. And so, um, but I think for, you know, not all people are able to actually get to that place because they are so metabolically damaged okay. and or the genetics have pre, you know, or epigenetics have predisposed them to, you know, not being able to have that flexibility. And I work with a lot of women that are, you know, very insulin resistant and mm -hmm. They're still at that stage where, you know, having a high carb meal like will derail them not only for weeks, but for months. And so it, it does take time to get there. But I love that you shared how it was hard in the beginning. And now that you've been doing it a longer time, it's much easier to do that. So I think yeah. that's, a, that's a great example of I, ideal metabolic health. <laughs> Well, I'd say that it, it took a long time and it was really, yeah. really friggin' hard. Yeah. <laughs> it took like, and I think for a lot of people, it could be discouraging that, that you have one meal and get knocked off for weeks or months. And yeah. it took me at least a year or more of just in and out and really just fighting to get back on track time and time and time again. And it did take a long time and it was really, really hard. And I could see how, if, if you had even more insulin resistance, it could be even harder. So I can definitely empathize with how people come at it from different, different places. It was hard for me, and I've always been really physically active. I think I had some early stages of some metabolic resistance, insulin resistance, but yeah, it was super hard. So everything we can do to help people get to that point where the flexibility comes, I think is, is a good thing. Yeah. So what was it then, you know, that motivated you to even try to get back on track? Um, you know, a lot of people get to that point and they're like, oh, this is just too hard. It's too restrictive. Yeah. You know, I just want to have 
enjoy, you know, whatever I want to eat? Like, what was it that motivated you to, to try to keep getting back on track, even though it was so hard? I guess it's all of the information I've read about the longer term consequences of not getting back on track. Okay. And, and that was the motivation for me. And uh, I think that developing health conditions later in life associated with metabolic disease and when we're part of these communities online, all of the information is being shared yeah. and you're reading it. And that was very motivational for me is just understanding that this is something for long-term health. You only need to read so many articles about the harmful effects of sugar mm -hmm. before you're like, man, this is going to be really hard, but I, something I have to stick with. So it was just constant reminders through the people that are close to me, the people in my network, the information that I would read. And so that's, I think, a huge part of it that, that helped keep me like, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying was, yeah. was part of it. So your, your fu future, you value your future self. Um, hmm. And it also sounds like too, just kind of being plugged into that community and being part of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we probably, we probably a lot of the same groups online and, mm -hmm. and a lot of the same people are sharing the information that we're both acquiring online. And, and that community aspect of it, actually, now that I'm saying it out loud, probably for the making that association was a big part of it. And every time I log into Facebook, my whole feed is just my, 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 my low carb keto friends and communities yeah. sharing the information. And so that's a really helpful way to get those reminders and, and get access to the latest information. I think that was a big part of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I found that that's really, you know, one of the essential pieces to having that long-term success is not feel like you're the only person in the world doing that, you, you know, and, and, you know, from a psychological perspective, we, we call that making that part of your identity. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the reasons that, you know, veganism has been so popular and successful is that, people made that part of who they were. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't just, you know, a vegan doesn't like have burgers and, and bacon here and there. It's because, no, I'm a vegan. I don't eat those things. And that's part of what makes somebody successful long-term on low carb or ketogenic approach is that it just becomes part of their identity yeah. and being in that community and being connected with those other people that have that same identity with themselves um, really is powerful for helping people stay on track and, and, you know, even though they have a little stray or indulgent here is, is coming back on track because I don't want to be not part of this community anymore. Yeah, we've made great friends, you know, like our connection. We, we met, what was it now, uh, two weeks ago at, at Paleo FX in Austin yeah. and, and just clicked. And a lot of my close friends now uh, uh, that I meet online and at different events, they've all come from this community. So it's a really supportive community. We, you know, we all bitch at each other sometimes about like disagreements about fine tuning certain details of the approach. But at right. the end of the day, it's all part of this one group that that's advancing this way of life. And I think if we keep that frame on it, then it's a really beautiful and powerful thing. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious when you're in your, your max ketone brain mode, like, how many more lines of code can you churn out versus <laughs> is that a uh, measurement? Cause I know like back in typing class, we measure like words per minute. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Do you do, do they have the same thing in coding like lines of code per minute or, you know, I'm just not one of those per types of people that sits down and works for long periods of time. I find like it's more my creative energy that okay. starts to come through and I may find like there's a lot of I, things I'm writing down on paper and I may find that I'm just really, really energized to go to the gym and put some music on and have an amazing workout. So I feel it more in like my, the creative side of my personality more than it is just the actual raw work side. However, it would be really interesting to get some, uh, some, some <laughs> nerdy computer coders and, and jack them up on, on a high level of ketosis and, and monitor uh, productivity in yeah. some way. Oh yeah, my gosh, if that, if that was the case, if we could, if you could quantify that in your software, yeah. uh, then, you know, all the big uh, tech companies would be all on board and they'd be mandating and they, they prioritize hiring low carbon keto. Uh, no more, no more players. crappy snacks in the kitchen. You know, it's all grass fed <laughs> beef sticks and uh, exogenous <laughs> ketones and anything we can do to, to, to jack up the, uh, jack up the levels there. That'd be pretty cool. Actually, it'd be pretty fun to work in a, an environment that even offered that in addition to the other stuff, like a low carb type of kitchen. Uh, I'm sure they exist. I don't know. 
maybe you know is, uh, companies that 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 embed that into their corporate culture. Have you seen? I that? I have not heard of that yet, and I you know I've had the experience of being inside you know Amazon um, offices and the um, and Microsoft as well, and they've yeah. definitely got you know a plethora of high carb sugary things and. You know, it, it's been a few years since I was in one of the Amazon offices, but it was mm -hmm. just mind blowing this entire like wall of um, bulk sugar candy snacks, all you could, all you could eat, you know, it was like a free for all thing. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, I'm sure the employees at that time were like, this is the coolest thing ever to have this perk. And I was just like, oh my gosh, you're like killing their productivity with this. And, um, you know, at Microsoft around here, they've got um, like, there's like uh, in their like kind of it's, it's not quite a break room, but it's more of like a beverage room that they've got where it's like all you can drink um, soda and diet soda and coffee and, um, and, but they do have like, you know, LaCroix and things like that as well. And some other options too. And um, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard of a co corporation that's doing that yet, but oh my gosh, the productivity and the, the wellness that they would instill would be really Remarkable. That's a really interesting thing. Is is you know, I wonder if anybody who listens out there as well one could could share examples of like LCHF like employ employers who are advocating this in their kitchens. I think that will be incredible, even if it's a, an an option in addition to the standard stuff. But even better if that was like the only choices. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I, I don't know if that exists, but it's really fascinating. I mean, do you do you do work with corporations or are you mostly individual clients? Yeah, I just do individuals. Um, and that's something I, we I, should you know, collaborate I, I, on. You know, in the past, I've done nutrition consulting. Microsoft every year has a big, it's kind of like a health fair where they check cholesterol and blood glucose. And yeah. I worked um, those events for several years in a row as a, as a contractor going in and advising people what their numbers mean. And so I got the experience of being in there. Um, and it, it was really cool because a lot, so it's been about a year and a half since I did the last one, but it was really, um, so the first two years that I did it, it was like nobody knew anything about low carb or anything like that. And, and um, there's a lot of really sick metabolic uh, numbers that I was seeing in those environments. But by the third year that I did it, I was starting to see, and, and the cool thing was you got to see year over year numbers and you could compare, right? And so um, data. By the third year, <laughs> I started seeing some people that had this dramatic weight loss and improvement in their health markers. And I would ask them, so what, do you, what have you been doing? Obviously, you did something different. And they were really hesitant to tell me. So they were like, well, I'm kind of doing this low carb thing. They'd be really yes. like, you know, kind of like how yeah. I would tell people first when I was doing keto. Yeah. And yeah. I'd be like, are you doing keto? Yeah. And they, yeah. And they were like waiting for the, the rash of judgment from the yeah. news, right? And, yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Like, look at all this improvement you've got. Like, keep doing it. Like, good yeah. job and congratulations. And so they were so relieved that I didn't uh, attack them because I can, I can certainly say that there were a lot of other nutritionists that working the same event that did not have the same fondness and, and uh, rosy view of what that could do for the people's health. So um and, and people could see the changes and, and correlate that back because you actually yeah. had the data, right? And that's, that's part right. of what we're trying to do is, is collect some data year over year and then bringing that person back in so they could see like, I, I guess it was like changes in body composition and, and blood sugar and cholesterol. Was it just that type of metrics? Exactly. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, a, the finger prick um, lipid panel, yeah. um, fasting blood glucose or, or not. And yeah, anthropometrics body measurements. So that's cool. Uh, yeah. I think there's a huge opportunity out there and maybe we can collaborate on this at some other time, but, it, but to bring LCHF based uh, programs into the corporate world. Yeah. If it doesn't exist. It needs to exist. So anyhow, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Topic for another discussion, but <laughs> yeah. it's really exciting if if companies started to get behind that type of offering and supporting that type of lifestyle. That'd be awesome. I'd I'd love to work for a company like that for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The the productivity and everything would be pretty amazing. So. Um, yeah. And um, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about your. You know, so. Um, how how is your you know people want to use your your software and your your platform like yep. they sign up is it a monthly subscription and how does that work yep so right now we're we're in beta so you can okay. sign up and and use it to your heart's content for and, free 
Yes, for free. So why wouldn't everybody be doing it? Everybody, go right now. Well, wait, watch yeah. the rest of this first, and we'll link it below. But <laughs> yeah, so so the way it works is you can you can sign up on our website. You can start using. It. At some point, we we will have a paid offering. But right okay. now, in beta, you can go try it out, kick the tires on it. The first thing it'll ask you is is do you want to connect any of your um, devices and apps? So a very common one is My Fitness Pal. Yeah. People who track their macros, they they like to import that data. They may also want to connect up a Fitbit or Apple Health that's giving them some information. Basic activity on movement. Okay. Now, people tend to be dismissive of a Fitbit, but there's a whole level of awareness now around steps and movement that did not exist before this technology. So getting that stuff in there. You can also, if you choose, import your medical records. So in my case, I have Stanford connected. And now I just go to Quest Diagnostics. I just go to requestatest.com and buy my own labs. Okay. Um, because it's just easier than, than going to my doctor and trying to convince him why I need fasting insulin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you can connect up your medical facilities. And then there's all kinds of uh, low-carb specific metrics in there. So there's the ability to measure ketones using blood, breath, or urine. There is a, a fasting timer. So you can actually um, monitor how much time you spend in a fasting state. Also, if you are using fasting being able to track your blood sugar readings during the fast. Okay. Make sure that you're staying in healthy ranges or seeing how your ketones go up or down based on different lifestyle interventions. So it's all in there. It's, it's all based on just like the Microsoft example, having some data to measure your progress and to help you make better decisions. So that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it's out there. It's available. We've had a really, really wonderful reception from low carb and keto. So we're just continuing to build tools for this community. That's fantastic. Um, so what do you say to the people that are super afraid of getting their personal data out there? Um, yeah. Well, I think we, 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 don't, we don't use the data for anything except our own internal purposes. Um, and so it's Fitbit data. It's, it's just information that, that's stored in your personal profile. And that's it. Um, so there's obviously people that are more sensitive than others. So that's just a personal, I think, decision that you need to make, but, but to go use the system, I think it's, it's your own personal repository. We don't sell data to anybody. I think that's a huge point to emphasize. It's, 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 we have to follow the same encryption standards that a hospital has to follow, for example, in terms of encryption and HIPAA compliance and all that other kind of stuff. So we, we do everything we can on, on that front. But I think if you look at other industries, let's take consumer finance as an obvious example. Are you familiar with Mint.com? Yeah. So when, when Mint.com came along, everybody said, well, I'm not going to connect my bank to this startup. And Okay, 1.7 million people connected within two years <laughs> because they're getting incredible value from that service. Uh, now, Mint, uh, Mint sells your data to financial companies and you get credit card applications in the mail. That's just their business model. We, we don't operate that way. But I think if people are getting value from the service that you provide, they are comfortable sharing certain parts of their data. So it's, it's your own comfort level, I think, is just the best way to look at it. Um, so that's... It just depends a lot on the individual. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, and, you know, there's going to be any certain portion of the population that's always going to be afraid to adapt to new technology. Um, but like the example you gave, there's the majority of the people that see the value in that and they get so much value from it that it's, um, that it's worth, worth it. But it's not even worth there's no risk there right so um. yeah it's, like if you connect a medical facility for example all we're doing is tapping into stanford and presenting that information while you're logged in to our app and as soon as you log out the, the data is destroyed so it's just it's a really secure way of doing things so even if you did get access to our system there, there's no medical data there it mm -hmm. stays back in in the source system so there's lots of different ways we, we protect information but at the end of the day it has to be up to you how much you, you want to start with and how comfortable you are with mm -hmm those types of things, but we're moving in a, in a direction in society where people are very comfortable with using tools that have access to information like that. So yeah, it's personal preference. If you're old school, you can use paper and pen and spreadsheet and, and keep it at home. I'm sure there's people that prefer that for the people that want to use our tools. Um, you know, we offer something more sophisticated and it's, it's a personal preference there. 
So where, where do you see uh, Heads Up Health going? Like, what's your future vision of, of yeah. this software? Well, we want to, we're starting on our mobile app. That's a big one. Um, oh, cool. We started with web just because we're, we're viewing a lot of information. And a screen is a little bit um, tedious for connecting and viewing and tracking all of this stuff. So mobile app is, is a big one for us. Where we're really trying to get to is to do more advanced computations for people. So uh, to go back to the example of the individual who had cancer, has cancer, what he's asking us for is he's saying, Dave, I'm on this medication. And I know that I've put on 20 pounds over the course of this medication that I've been on. You have all the information in, in that six months. So show me everything that's changed over six months. Mm. So being able to present all of the information so you can start to figure, figure out what works for you. And, and Rob's, Rob Wolf's book about personalized approaches, everyone responds differently. In some cases, the blood sugar is high because of sleep apnea, poor sleep. The other person, it's high because of lack of activity. The other person, it's high because of some other factor. So we want the software to start getting intelligent enough mm. where it, it can help you identify those correlations. Ooh, that's cool. That's really hard to build. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to take us time. But being able to just look at everything over six months and say, wow, my activity really went down when my weight went up or um, my, this other variable changed that affected this variable. The more we can surface those kinds of connections, those kinds of insights and do a better job telling you week to week, month to month, quarter to quarter, just getting a report on how everything is changing. That's where we're starting to invest now. I think we have a great system to integrate and visualize and, and manage and the next part is the intelligence. So that's the direction we're headed in. Oh, wow. How powerful will that be? That's going to be amazing because it's hard. We're working on it, but we will get there. So it's more around that type of um, information that we're investing in. More brain ketones for your development team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll have uh, exogenous ketones on tap and all kinds of things. <laughs> we'll keep us motivated. Everyone has their opinion on that. It's, it's more of a joke than anything, but um, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Imagine, imagine the, the corporate break room that's got the, the, instead of a beer tap, they've got the uh, <laughs> ketones on tap. That'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, um, that's, that's where we're headed. And uh, I'd love to keep in touch with you and see how we can continue to collaborate. I know you put me in touch with the uh, chronometer guys. So um, yeah. we had an, an initial conversation with them and we'll both be in San Diego in a couple months. So yes. look forward to just, first of all, continue to get your input and your feedback. And um, maybe it's something that's of value to your clients and just keeping in touch as, as this evolves and, and as your business evolves as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, just in wrapping this up, is there anything else that um, you were hoping I would ask you about or that you wanted to share with people who are watching this? No, I didn't have come in here with any other expectations other than just continuing the conversation that we started after multiple glasses of dry farm wines in uh, Austin, <laughs> Texas. That's how we met. And, I'm, and, and I, I knew we'd have a great conversation and I didn't have any set uh, questions to, to answer. I think we covered a lot of great stuff. Yeah. If anyone has questions for me, I'm at Dave at headsuphealth.com. So you can email me directly. So, um, yeah, I think it was a great discussion. Anything yeah. else you think that we, we missed? Well, we'll, li we'll link below uh, Heads Up Health, and we'll, we'll put your email on there as well, and, and if there's anything else you think of that you want us to share below as well. Yep. Um, you know, just my, my final question for you is that um, let's imagine that, you know, today is your, your final day, the meteor. We know the meteor is coming to Earth, and it's going to kill us all today. What's, what's your final meal? Oh, man, I'd have to probably go for uh, this one is, is not going to be low carb keto. Sure. <laughs> but I'm, I'm cracking open a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'm going to have a cheeseburger and fries. Okay. All right. And, and you? What's, what's your meal? Oh, it's funny. Uh, oh, my gosh. I think I would go for like a pretty juicy steak. Um, yeah, nice one. Yeah. What kind of cut? What kind um, of cut? Gotta be more I don't know. You know, I, I, I tend to just kind of want to like, like, I don't like the, the high carb crash. Like I don't want to yeah. feel like that even on my last day on earth. Like I like sure. it so good. You want to go out feeling on a really nice, yeah. 
Yeah, some kind of, you know, veggie with some a lot of butter on it or something like that. Maybe yeah. um, broccoli or cauliflower or something like that. Or, um, you know, maybe, you know, just like steak, steak and veggies, salmon and yeah. some seafood and scallops, probably maybe even more what I'd go for. And, but I might, you know, maybe for dessert, I might have like some kind of a, a chocolate flourless cake, but even that you can do without a sugar-free version and it's just as good as the, the, the sugar stuff. So, yep. Yeah. Well, um, I definitely took a different direction with that one for sure. <laughs> but well, that's my comfort. You know, it's your yeah. it's your choice. It's the last day for you, so you got to pick what you want. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here, Dave. Yeah, if it was you great, enjoyed Carol. this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'm so excited to um, see all that comes comes out of this. And I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put myself in there and I'm gonna get all my clients signed up on there and. Yep. And uh, I can't wait to start to to see all that data and help help everybody help their help themselves. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad we met a couple of weeks ago, and really looking forward to keeping in touch. Thanks, it was really fun chatting with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye, Ciao. everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>